Hello and welcome to Usability Sciences August Webinet presentation on optimizing a product compare page. My name is Lori Whitaker. I am a lead usability analyst here at Usability Sciences and I will be presenting this top topic to you today. Number one, clearly present the comparison feature on the product list page. Often users are unsure how to select an item to compare. Once they've selected the item, they might be unsure how to actually run the comparison. So an easy solution would be to place the compare option in an easily accessible place on the page. This is an example from Best Buy. They do a really good job of placing the compare feature right below the picture of the item that your user is looking at to purchase. Another good idea is to use a button for the actual compare function. So you notice that they have a checkbox here so you can check it to denote that this is one that you want to compare. But in order to run the compare, they change it to a button. It's, but buttons are always actionable items. So it's very easy to see that this is something that you need to click in order to get a resulting action. It's also nice to indicate how many items a user can compare at one time. It varies from site to site, but um, the way that Best Buy does it, I think, is unique in that it is visual. They give you a block here, it says compare up to three items, so you can read that there are three that you can compare at one time, and you also have the three squares here that once you click the button, I'll show you what's going to happen. The fourth solution is visually indicate how many products your user has chosen. So it's great to tell them that they can compare up to three, up to seven, but how many have they checked so far? Especially important when you have more than one page of products. So what Best Buy does is once you hit the compare button, you'll see that the items show up here under your compare up to three items area. So now you know that you have two that you've comparing so far and you have one space that isn't filled in with anything. And this will gather information across product pages. So you can see there are more than five pages here of products and this compare area will reflect that. Number two, ensure users can easily compare the products. So once that they found what they wanted to compare and, and ran the comparison, the resulting comparison page should be formatted in a way that they can easily compare the information. Often I've seen information put in paragraph form and it's just very difficult to compare across products. An example of kind of what not to do, um, this is from Cisco. This is one of their pages where they talk about um, business type phones, IP phone service. And this is just a snapshot of this page. It goes on for at least three or four page links. Of you've got your icon of the product here. You've got kind of where it can be used. And then here are your bulleted list of the features. Well, it keeps going on like that, all the way down the page. And it's very hard, the way this is formatted, to compare the unified 7911G to the 3911 because of the way that the bulleted list is formatted. It's hard to pick out e in each individual feature and see how they measure up. This is a great example of the fact that it's just not enough to place the information in a table. That That's not enough in order to make it easy for people to understand and to compare. Easy solution, provide them with an easily understood format. Here's an example from the Home Depot. I've got four fans that I'm comparing and they present the information in a table format and it does, there, are, there is additional information below here. But what they do is that they break up what would have been paragraphs or short sentences into just simple phrases, a couple of words here and there, and they categorize it. So you've got your shade glass type, you've got mesh spotlight, and then the other ones that don't have anything, obviously don't have a shade or a glass for that fan. 
So it's very easy as a, at a glance to see what product will meet your needs, just based on the list of criteria on the left. Number three, limit the number of items that are compared. Now this one gets a little tricky. If you have too many items, you might overwhelm users and it may cause users to scroll side to side in order to compare all of the products in order to see them. But too few items might be insufficient for comparison. You, they might not have enough information or feel like they can compare enough to get a good sense of what the best product is for, their, for them. So the solution would be to allow users to select between two and five items to compare. However, Keep in mind that you can allow users to compare more than five as long as your formatting of your page stays within the width of the page on the typical 1026 by 768 resolution. So the goal here is not to keep adding products to compare and make the user scroll over. They need to look at all of the information on one page. So here's an example from Crutchfield. They will allow you to select up to 10 items, and on my screen resolution that I took the screenshot on, which was higher than the 1026, you didn't have to scroll over. You can see that the information gets a little bit jumbled, well, not jumbled, um, smaller, and kind of more condensed on the page the more items that you use, the more items that you add to your comparison. There's little to no space between the icons here at the top, but you can still compare. And then here's your example at Best Buy, where I've only picked three items to compare. You get more space in between the product displays, but you still get a good sense of which products would be right for me. Number four, product details. Again, if users feel that details are not there are not enough details for them to make a purchase, they won't purchase. They, they have come to the comparison page in order to determine which product is right for them and they're really depending on the details that you provide to them to determine that. If data is inaccurate, that's going to hurt. Your users are going to immediately become suspicious of any other data that's on that page. And sometimes data is missing, so if you've got a camera and there is a item on the left column named like lens type and there's no information under one of the cameras but the other two have information there, users are suspect of that. Why is that missing? Is it an oversight or is it something that's not optimal and they chose to leave it out? So here's an example of the Best Buy comparison page with three, get three cameras here. Here's the top half and here's the bottom half of the page. So you can see that there's a lot of information to be had on this page. All right, so you can see where here it says Vista compatible, home premium, home premium, and then there's nothing for the Kodak camera. Is it not Vista compatible? Is that what this is telling me? Or is it not compatible with Home Premium because there are other versions of Vista out there? Uh, leaving it blank leaves the user a lot of room to suppose what might be there. And another one, shots available with image stitching. That would be, I think, a three or a five down there. So you can stitch three of them together here, but these two, the Fuji and the Kodak, are both blank. So does it not have the stitching, being able to stitch the images together, or does it um, just have more than five images to stitch together? Who, who knows what it is? There's nothing there to tell you. Another problem is users are unable to return to the product detail page. All right, so easy solution. Just ensure that all information presented is accurate. Give detailed information similar to what is on the package. So if I was a user, if I was a customer and I went to Best Buy to their brick and mortar store, wanted to look at the Kodak Easy Share camera, and I picked up the package, can I find everything on this page and more that would be on that package? 
but you want to get as close to that brick and mortar experience as possible. Additionally, provide other information that a user could gleam if they were in the store. So if I pick this phone up, I could see how easily it held, was able to be held in my hand, what the color is, what the size of it is, that sort of thing. And also allow users to get back to the product detail page. And a good way to do that is just allow them to click on the product image on the comparison page to be taken back to that product detail page. All right, number five, product prices. Users can compare features, but ultimately they're going to need to know how much that product costs. Easy solution, give the price for each product that is being compared on the product comparison page. Here's an example from Crushfield, and they've got the pictures of the DVD players here, your add to cart button, you can take it off, and then the next thing is the price. So you, before you even get into the details down here of what it can do, if you're a budget conscious shopper, you can say, I can't afford a $4.99 DVD player, remove it from my comparison chart, and then you can look more seriously at the three that are remaining. Ensure that the price stands out from other elements on the page. Here they bolded it and the rest of the information is just kind of a regular weight on the page. Another thing that you can do is um, use color and font size. Also place it in a prominent location. Here it's close to the top of the page. It's your first item in your chart here that you're going to look at. And it's also underneath your action buttons. And again, you can use um, font color and size to set the information apart on the page. Number six, allow users to add products to their cart from the comparison page. It seems really easy, but often it doesn't happen. Um, people get confused if there's not a clear way to add the product to the shopping cart. An example of this would be Adobe. Here is their page of what software might be right for you. They'll tell you how much it costs, what your value is, what you're saving, what it comes with, and you can check the product, check the box to see, kind of to filter the, um, the components to see which product you ultimately need from this list of six that will have all of the products in it. But what they don't let you do is buy it. You can see how much it costs, you can see what comes in it, but then you have to go to a different page in order to purchase it or add it to a cart. Easy solution, give users a clear and concise way to add that product to their shopping cart. You can do this by using familiar terms such as add to cart. Here's an example from Best Buy again. They've got the add to cart verbiage here. You set that action apart from anything else on the page through the use of color and font size. In this case, they used a button, and that's the third point here. Consider making the purchase option a button. Buttons are always action-oriented. People understand if they click a button, something's going to happen. Here the button's green. Again, green means go. It's the only green thing on this page, all of these Add to Cart buttons. It's bigger than the price text here and it's logically located at the bottom of the very short column for the camera. And what you can't see down here is that the um, product comparison page keeps going further down here. So this is what you see first when you get to the product compare page. Number seven, allow users to take things out of their cart, um, sorry, out of their comparison. Often people are unsure how to take things out of the comparison. Often it's because the remove option isn't even there. You've assumed that that's all they want to compare and they never want to whittle it down at all and that's that's their only option. Another problem is that it's just unclear how to remove it. Is there, does it say remove? Is there an X? Do you click off the checkbox and does it go away? They, people are just unsure. Easy solution. 
uh, is to allow them to remove a product from the comparison table by providing them a clear way to do it. So here is another example from Crutchfield. So you've got your line here that says remove and it's right below the add to cart right above the price. And they've also set the action apart by making it blue underlined text so it's a link people know if they click there they're either going to be taken to another page or something's going to happen. And they've also got the um, they've got a blow up here of the actual text and the icon. This little no enter sign is getting to be very universally used, especially in the iPhone world and, and those applications of taking something off, deleting it. So even having this here, if you're not sure what remove is, that's a minus sign in a plus in a red circle. It means to take away, to delete. So that's kind of their backup there. Number eight, customer ratings. I've heard it time and time again, people really rely on customer feedback. Whether it's shopping for a hotel, shopping for cars, figuring out where to go on Yelp for dinner, they, they really rely on reviews from customers. And it becomes a problem when customer reviews are missing, especially if you're out shopping for an electronic item or a car or something of that sort. Often there are ratings but no reviews. So you'll see the star system or a box shaded in, but you, there are no reviews to go along with that. And along with that, users are unsure what criteria ratings are based on. So you've got four stars, but what does that mean? Is it a four star hotel? like meaning I have a concierge, or is it four stars rated from my customers staying there and they have a four star experience? Easy solution is to include ratings along with criteria. And on this page, it's from uh, Office Depot, and they have the rating here, the three stars, and they have also got the reviews. So you can tell that these stars are based on the two reviews that that product has gotten already. And not only can you associate those two things, you can actually click there to actually to read the reviews, which is great. And that would be the second solution is to ac allow users to access customer reviews. Don't be afraid that someone might say something bad about your product. It adds authenticity to it. Because often I'll have users say, well, this is all fine and good. It's like they've hired somebody to come in here and review this because all it is is super good reviews. It's got five stars out of five and no product's perfect. Number nine, highlight product differences. Often, if you have a product that has a lot of detailed information with it, users can become overwhelmed with the information and it's harder for them to determine which elements are different across products. And this is even when you keep it to about three items to compare on a page. Easy solution is give the users the ability to easily determine which product features are different by allowing them to highlight the differences. An example of this would be on the Best Buy page. So you've got your three cameras up here and then you've got your long table of information. So you've got it formatted correctly. You've got your left column here and it goes across depending on the different cameras and the information changes. But just at, at, at a glance, it's hard to see where the differences fall. So if you click on the highlight differences button up here, what'll happen is all of the information that is different will be highlighted in blue. So the same information stays white like it was here, but the different information is highlighted in blue. And in this case, it, there's still a lot of different information <laughs> because there are different uh, cameras. But if you had a closer comparison group, it would be a lot easier to pick out 
the different product details. Number 10, allow users to do something with the comparison page. Often users are unable to save the comparison chart. There is no way to print it out and no way to save it. So no way to email it or share it with anyone. And so they've gone through the trouble of picking out items to compare. They've gone through the trouble of looking at the chart, determining maybe even whittling it down for to a couple of uh, different options to compare ultimately. But now they can't do anything with it. So an easy solution would be to provide them with a printer-friendly print option. A good example of this is on the Office Depot page. Here you've got your product comparison here. You've got one, two, and then there's another one over here to the right, products being compared. And then you have your print and your email option right here on the page, which makes it super easy for people. And especially, it's nice to have the print printer-friendly version when you've got a chart going on, when it's a table. Because often tables aren't quite formatted just to be printed out from the page itself. It, they sometimes need a little extra formatting help. So allow, again, allow users to email the page, either to themselves or to friends, or to bosses if they need to uh, be comparing things. And use color and font size and placement to set these elements apart from other things on the page. Here they've used icons as well to denote the actions, which I think is great. All right, well, thank you so much for listening to the presentation for August 2009. I sure hope that uh, you got something out of it, and I thank you so much.